Hi, and welcome to episode four of creating an epic prog metal song from scratch. In this episode, we'll be writing some lyrics and creating some guitar riffs. If you haven't seen the series from the start, go here and follow the YouTube card to episode one. This video is sponsored by the Northern Ireland Arts Council. Lyrics have always been one of my favourite things about heavy metal music. It takes me back to when I was a teenager, when the highlight of the week for me would be going to a record store, buying a vinyl, taking it home, getting the headphones on, opening the sleeve and just immersing myself in the music while reading the lyrics. So because of the way I feel about lyrics, they have always been something that I think very carefully about and consider to be of vital importance to a song. But before we can write any lyrics, we need something to sing over. So I've been jamming away for the last half an hour and I've come up with a rough that I think would be worth trying. Maybe I'll point out at this stage that my guitar is always tuned to drop C. And one of the things I really like about Drop C is obviously it's it's a bit deeper. But another thing is that these two notes are both C. So anything I do... I can play up an octave between the two of them. And that's part of that rough that I have developed where I play the same thing on both strings. So it's something like this. I think it's got a Lydian type feel. And then I was thinking the drums would be quite intense at that part. And then the drums would go half time and I'd simplify the riff to something like this. And then I was thinking maybe there could be some kind of a chorus in it where it goes a bit more melodic. And I kind of like this chord sequence here. You know, and so on. So I'll try and program some drums for this and then I'll record the guitar and bass and then we can concentrate on the lyrics for the rest of the episode. So let's make some drum parts. I'll fast forward through this section for speed.
Okay, so let's copy all these parts now to make the arrangement for the track. Let's do some keyboards now. I really like the Lydian feel of the main riff, so I was going to try and pull out more of a Lydian sound on the keyboards. So, I really like this dissonant feel here that happens. And I think I'll double up those notes on strings as well with a with a low vibe. And in this section here. Because I like that dissonance so much, I was kind of thinking Alfred Hitchcock's, and I think it might work over that rough. Let's see. Yeah, I like that. Let's see. Copy that down to the strings as well. And for this section, just very straightforward string chords. Let's try that. I guess I could probably add a higher note onto that. Because that note is a common note on the first two chords, so it might be nice if that if you can hear that high and it sustains over the chord change. Right, so what have we got now? I like the vibe of that. It's got an atmosphere to it, which I think is pretty cool. So we need lyrics. I think I'll head off, get a cup of coffee, see if I can come up with any lyrics. Um, it may take me an hour. It may take me all day, but I'll be back when I have some lyrics to talk about. I think I have come up with some lyrics. And what inspired me to write these lyrics is this particular moment in the music. <laughs> The way that chord sequence descended made me think of a technique in lyric writing called word painting, where the lyrics actually describe the music. Probably the most famous examples of this would be Westlife, You Raise Me Up, where when they sing up, they go up. Or another one would be Radiohead, High and Dry, where when they sing Don't Leave Me High, they sing a high note. This is descending, 
So I kept thinking of the phrase, fall from grace. It didn't scan properly, so I changed it to, I fall from your grace. And all the other lyrics have come about as a result of this initial phrase. So here are the chorus lyrics for this section. I fall from your grace, enduring this place, resentfully, your enemy. Now, it sort of finishes off as if it's a letter being written by someone to someone else. And that caused me to start thinking that earlier on in the first part of the song, we were saying that the lyrics were about regret. And I had the idea that maybe this part of the song will be written from the perspective of the actual emotion and not from a person as a, in a way we're sort of personifying the emotion. So that led me into writing the other lyrics. And here are the three verses that we need for this section. So if this emotion was actually a person, they have lived many years, fought and died many times and forgotten more than you'll ever know. One of the main tools that I use for helping me to write lyrics is a rhyming dictionary and a thesaurus. I always have those two things on hand. They help me to more quickly try and find the things that I'm trying to say when I write lyrics. Quite often I have a word in mind, but it doesn't scan properly. It doesn't have the right amount of syllables or so on. And a thesaurus can really help with that. And sometimes finding rhymes in a rhyming dictionary can also um, help to spark ideas. There's a rhyming system that I started on the first verse and tried to carry it through for the rest of them. So we see the first two lines rhyme with each other, then the third and the sixth line rhyme with each other. So we've got lives, times, distress, acquiesce, and then no rhymes with thrown. These aren't exact rhymes, but sometimes near rhymes sound a wee bit better to my ear and slightly less contrived. In the second verse, then we have force, remorse, defense, pestilence, and then fear and engineer. And then in the third verse, we have abate, disintegrates, tooth, youth. And the third and sixth are revolt and controlled, which don't even rhyme at all, but uh, it felt right. I'm particularly happy with the third verse. In that we have the line, in obedience you raise a revolt. This is a dichotomy in the sense that obedience and revolt are the opposites of each other. Dichotomies are very common in the type of music that we love. I think in Passion and Warfare, Edom and Smile, Heaven and Hell. It's such a common thing, but it, it really works well. And then the idea of regret, for an eye and a tooth, you could mourn a squandered youth, its inertia buried deep and controlled. This idea of like bottling up all your regrets. Sometimes my lyrics are very literal and other times my lyrics are more cryptic and metaphoric. I think how lyrics are interpreted is a deeply individual thing for the listener. And my goal here is not to prescribe how my lyrics should be interpreted. It's just to show you what my thinking is in the creative process and how I write lyrics. I know a lot of people that are very good musicians and very good songwriters, but they always talk about having a lot of difficulty when it comes to writing lyrics. I think a lot of people believe that they have to wait about for inspiration to strike like a poet. Sometimes that does happen and sometimes I get ideas for songs and I write them so quickly I can't even believe that I've written it myself. But more often than not, I just have to write lyrics. So you need a practical, pragmatic approach to writing lyrics. One of the ways I like to do it is just to write whatever comes into your head, anything at all, and then just slowly work on it trying to find ways to improve it, trying to find different things that you could do that make them better. Let's take an example. Let's write a fairly obvious lyric. Sitting at the table drinking wine. Now that's a very basic phrase that anyone could have come up with. Um, and it probably is completely usable, but I don't think it has the melodrama or hyperbole that you would expect from a heavy metal song. So let's look at it. Sitting at the table. Now the word sitting is probably a redundancy because as soon as you say at the table, you could probably infer that we're sitting at the table. So let's look at trying to change this word for something better, sitting. So what would you be doing at the table? Talking, uh, chatting, conversing, conspiring, colluding, conspiring. I think that sounds good. Conspiring at the table, drinking wine. Now, maybe table is a bit ordinary. 
So let's think about table. What other words? Sitting, oh, straight away, I think, alter. Now, an accident has happened here now that's quite cool. We have alter and we have wine. And that has a very strong religious connotation. I'm not too sure about it. I think maybe it's too strong a religious connotation. But those are the types of accidents that can sometimes happen that are cool. Let's think about this. Conspiring at the altar, drinking wine. Drinking wine. What are you doing when you're drinking wine? Um, supping drinks. Um, getting drunk. Talking. Conspiring again. Thinking about things. Plotting. Planning. Reminiscing. I like reminiscing. Conspiring at the altar. Reminiscing. Cons dr drinking. Sipping. Conspiring at the altar. Sipping memories. Let's try that. Conspiring at the altar. Sipping memories. So what we started off with is sitting at the table drinking wine. And what we've ended up with is conspiring at the altar. Sipping memories. Now that sounds far more lyrical to me. And suits the style of music that we play a lot better. And it basically came from just writing any old thing. And word for word trying to improve each individual word. Until we have something that feels a lot more like lyrics. So the only thing that remains now is to have a go at singing these parts. Completed recording the vocals for this section. We can see I've recorded the main vocal here, 
and then I've doubled it hard left and right. Then I've recorded a harmony vocal and I've doubled that so that there are left and right harmony vocals. Then that growly screamo vocal, I've recorded that and doubled it and that's panned hard left and right as well. I have processed all the vocals with Melodyne and I have also run them through vocal line. So they're all lined up nicely and reasonably in tune. So let's hear what we have so far soloed. I have lived many lives, fought and died many times. I've forgotten more than you'll ever know. I'm a sea of distress. I'm a torrent acquiesce. A dominion of coercion, my throne. And then in the second verse, the melody gets a bit higher. Subjugation and force. I have portion no remorse. I'm the chains that insulate you from fear. I'm an armored defense, a relentless pestilence. I'm an architect, a global engineer. I fall from your grace, enduring this place. Resentfully, your enemy. I like some of the dissonant harmonies in that chorus part. They worked well. Resurrection abate as your faith disintegrates in obedience you raise a revolt for an eye and a tooth you can mourn a squandered youth it's a nation buried deep in control a fall so let's hear that now in the song love that half time rough in the middle of it so so far so good i hope you enjoyed this deep dive into lyrics today i hope you found it useful and i look forward to seeing you in episode five you rock